from the great Australian short story writer and poet Henry Archibald Lawson. And tonight we are celebrating 100 years since Henry Lawson passed on to the spirit world. 2nd of September 1922, Henry left us. Didn't leave me because I wasn't even born. All right, a little bit about Henry, Henry Lawson, everybody. So yeah, tonight show purely Henry Lawson's poetry, apart from his mum, because even trolls have mums. Henry Archibald Hertzberg Lawson, born 17th of June 1867, passed away the 2nd of September 1922, was an Australian writer and Bush poet, along with his contemporary banjo Patterson. And Lawson is among the best known Australian poets and fiction writers of the colonial period and is often called Australia's greatest short story writer. So, yes, Henry Lawson did have a mum, and Henry Lawson's mum, uh, was a bit of a feminist. In fact, she was known as the mother of womanhood suffrage in Australia because she was fighting for women's rights uh, in 1902 when the Women's Suffrage League of New South Wales celebrated victory and at last obtaining the vote for women. Uh, she was born on a station at Guntawine Station near Gulgong, New South Wales. And um, yeah, the motherhood, mother of womanhood suffrage is a great tribute for Henry Lawson's mum, who worked and fought for the right for women to vote. Now we're gonna, obviously she was a bit scorned or had a bit of a cheaty husband, who knows, but anyway, Henry did turn into an alcoholic, so I just mentioned that, and he was often sent off to the stations to dry out, well, anyway, only moved to 55, but this is his mum, right? A Woman's Love, by Louisa Lawson, A Woman's Love. I cared not what their failings were, thy faults I would not see. I only knew I loved thee well and thought thee true to me. I shunned amid life's dizzy crowd those who would defame, for oh, it pained trusting heart to hear men idly blame. I would not heed when meddling friends would whisper aught of thee. I thought not one so trim seeming true could e'er a traitor be. And then they knew no of thy tono of love and fond caress that would my soul responsive move with its great tenderness. Now how my hungry aching heart craved that kind word or smile that did my thoughts despondent groan from my sad life beguile. They knew not, and nor more to shall, all thou hast been to me. But I forgive thee, all because thou once wert true to me. Louisa Lawson, mother of woman on suffrage. Okay, now one of the things that Henry Lawson wrote about, because he died in 1922, was the World War I. And this is a poem about exactly that. The Scots of the Riverina. The boy cleared out of the city from his home at harvest time. They were Scots of the Riverina, and to run away from home was a crime. The old man burned his letters, and the first and last he burned, and he scratched his name from the Bible. When the old wife's back was turned, a year went past and another, there were calls from the firing line, they heard the boy and enlisted, but the old man made no sign. 
His name must never be mentioned on the farm by Gundagai. They were Scots of the Riverina, in Edward the Her Kirk hard by. The boy came home on his final, and the township's bonfire burned. His mother's arms were about him, but the old man's back was turned. The daughters begged for a pardon until the old man raised his hand. A Scot of the Riverina who was hard to understand. The boy was killed in Flanders, where the best and bravest die. There were tears at the Graham homestead and grief in Gundagai. But the old man ploughed at daybreak and the old man ploughed to the murk. There were furrows of pain in the orchard while his house folk went to the kirk. The hurricane lamp in the rafters dimly and dimly burned and the old man died at the table when the old wife's back was turned. Face down on his bare arms folded, he sank with his wild grey hair outspread over the open Bible and a name rewritten there. Ooh, that's a spooky one, that one. I've got goosebumps all over from that. Well, Henry Lawson, spirit might have moved on to the spirit world, but his spirit's still around today, a hundred years later. And the wonderful historical recording that he wrote, and he recorded in poetry. Right, next one we've got the Wanderlite. Excuse me. <coughs> got to clear the throat. The Wanderlite. And they heard the tent poles clatter, and the fly in twain was torn, tis the soiled rag of a tatter of the tent where I was born. And what matters it, I wonder, Bricklestone or Calico or a bush you would have born under. When it happened long ago, and my beds were tamp beds and tramp beds and damp beds, and my beds were dry beds on drought stricken ground, hard beds and soft beds and wide beds and narrow, for my beds were strange beds, wide world round. And the old hag seemed to ponder, as my mother told me so, and she said that I would wander where few would think to go. He will fly the haunts of tailors, he will cross the oceans wide, for his fathers they were sailors along his good father's side. Behind me, before me, oh my road to stormy, the thunder of skies and the seas sullen sound. The coastal line of the English or foreign, the stateroom will steerage the wide world round. And the old hag, she seemed troubled as she bent above the bed. He'll dream things and he'll see things to come true when he's dead. He'll see things all too plainly and his fellows will deride. For his mothers, they were gypsies all on his good mother's side. And my dreams are strange dreams and daydreams and great dreams and my dreams are wild dreams and old dreams and new. They haunt me and daunt me with fears of the morrow. My brothers, they doubt me, but my dreams come true. And so I was born of fathers where ice-bound harbours are, men whose strong limbs never rested and whose blue eyes saw afar. Till for gold one left the ocean, seeking over plain and hill, and so I was born of mothers whose deep minds were never still. I rest not, tis best not, the world is a wide one, and caged for an hour I pace to and fro. I see things and dream things and play while I'm sleeping. I wander forever and dream as I go. I've stood by Table Mountain, on the line at Cape Town and watched the sunset fading from the roads I marked down. And I looked out with my brothers from the heights behind Bombay 
grazing north and west and eastward over roads I'll tread someday. For my ways are strange ways and new ways and old ways and deep ways and steep ways and highways and low. I'm at home and at ease on a track I know not and restless and lost on the road that I know. What a beautiful poem that is, eh? Oh, it's fantastic. What an amazing writer Henry Lawson was. Andy's gone with cattle. Our Andy's gone with cattle now. Our hearts are out of order. With drought he's gone to battle now across the Queensland border. He left us in dejection now, our thoughts with him are roving. It's dull on this selection now, since Andy's winter drove him. Who now shall wear the cheerful face in times when things are slackest, and who shall whistle round the place when fortune frowns her blackest? Oh, who shall check the squatter now when he comes round a snarling? His tongue is growing hotter now since Andy crossed the darling. Oh, may the showers in the torrents fall and all the tanks run over and may the grass grow green and tall in pathways of the drover. Oh, many good angels send us rain on stretches desert standy and when the summer comes again, God grant twill bring us Andy. Beautiful, beautiful poetry of Henry Lawson. And I'm reading here out of this one here, um, the poetical works of Henry Lawson. Now, as I'm going through this book, I have just had a piece of paper fall out. It's a random piece of paper and I am just amazed that it's here. It's, it's actually, it's just happened. It's a piece of paper that's fallen out and it's a poem by a guy woman, Myra Sweeney, who's not with us now. Now Myra Sweeney has got a couple of books over here in the library and this is called Valerie Joyce Cook, Knee Adams, 14.442 to 2.11.89. And because this has just jumped out at me, I'm going to read it now because I think sometimes spirit does that. So I'm going to break, interrupt Henry Lawson's flow and read you a, a guy, a poet that and I really don't know. This is typed on a small piece of paper. It looks like it's book page size. That could have been out of one of Myra Sweeney's books, but I don't know. Valerie Joyce Cook, Me Adams. I'm going back to New England, to the place that's always been home. I'm leaving Curry Curry forever and never again will I roam. Soon I'll be back in the mountains and the magpies will wake me at dawn. I'll open the store to the sunshine and the smell of the fresh country moor. I walk by the creeks and gullies and sit there beneath the tall trees with freedom and peace all around me. My cares will all blow away in the breeze. The scent of the water will drift down the hills and the jackass will laugh with glee. My mind will rest and my heart will be free and the robins will sing especially for me. The noise of the traffic will be far away and the pace will slow down for me. I'll leave the dark clouds behind and take home the sunshine with me. Dot, 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 dot. Myra Sweeney, Gyra. Wow. That's really quite fortunate, bizarre that I've found that. So obviously this book might have belonged to a Valerie Cook or part of her family. Anyway, let's get on with Penny Lawson's poetry tonight. Okay. This one's The Drover's Sweetheart. And please pardon if I do stumble because I've never read it before. An hour before the sun goes down, 
behind the ragged boughs. I go across the little run to bring the dusty cows. And once I used to sit and rest beneath the fading dome, for there was one I loved the best who'd bring the cattle home. Our yard is fixed with double bales, round one the grass is green, the bushes growing through the rails, the spike is rusted in. It was from there his freckled face would turn and smile at me. He'd milk seven in the race while I was milking three. He kissed me twice and once again and rode across the hill. The pint pots and the hobble train I hear them jingling still. About the hut the sunlight falls, the fire shines through cracks. I climb the broken stockyard rails and watch the bridle tracks. And he is coming back again, he wrote from Everett's Rock. A flood was in the Darling then, and foot rocked in the flock. The sheep were falling thick and fast a hundred miles from town. And when he reached the line at last, he trucked the remnant down. And so he'll have to stand the cost. His luck was always bad. Instead of making more, he lost the money that he had. And now he'll manage, heaven knows, my eyes are getting dim. He says, he says, he don't suppose I'll want to marry him. And if I wouldn't take his hand without a golden glove, oh, Jack, you men won't understand how much a girl can love. I long to see his face once more, Jack's dog, thank God, it's Jack, I never thought I'd faint before, he's come out the track. What a lovely poem, I drove his sweetheart. <coughs> On the night train. Have you seen the bush by moonlight from the train go running by? Here a patch of glassy water, there a glimpse of majestic sky. Have you heard the still voice calling, yet so warm and yet so cold? I'm the mother bush that bore you. Come to me when you're old. Did you see the bush below you was sweeping darkly to the range, all changed and all unchanging, yet so very old and strange? Did you hear the bush a calling when your heart was young and bold? I'm the mother bush that nursed you. Come to me when you are old. Through the long and vociferous cutting as the night train swiftly sped, did you hear the grey bush calling from the pine ridge overhead? Have you seen the seas and cities? All seems done and all seems told. I'm the mother bush that loves you. Come to me. Now you're old. Again, another beautiful piece of writing by Henry Lawson. And a, a ballad of the elder son. A son of elder sons am I, his boyhood days were cramped and scout, who lived the old domestic lie and breathed the old familiar cant. Come, elder brothers mine, and bring the loads of care that you have won, and gather round me while I sing. The Ballad of the Eldest Son The eldest son on barren soil Where life is crude and lands and new Must share the father's hardest toil And see the father's troubles through With no child thoughts to match his own No game to play, no race to run The youth his father might have known is solemn for the elder son. 
Up certain squatter had two sons up Canaan some way some years ago. The graft was hard on those old runs, the sun was hot and life was slow. The younger brother coolly claimed the portion that he had known and sought the life for which untamed the high young spirits always yearn. A year or so he knocked about and spent his checks on girls and wine. But getting stony in the drought, he took a job of herding swine. And thought it was a hog to swig and fool with girls till all was loot. Twas rather rough to mind the pig and have to eat its tucker too. Then coming to himself, he said, he reckoned truly though dead be the rousers in my father's share that got more grub than they can. I've been a fool, but such is fate. I guess I'll talk the governor round. I've acted crunk. I'll tell him straight. He's had his time. I'll too. I'll be banned. I'll tell him straight. I've had my fling. I'll tell him I've been on the beer. Put me on anything. I'll graft away with Bounder here. He rode his swag and struck for home. By time he was pretty slim. And when the old man saw him come, well, you know how he welcomed him. They brought the best robe in the house. The ring and killed the fatted cup. And now they hold a grand carouse. And eat and drink and dance and laugh. While well, from the field the eldest, whose character is not admired, comes plodding home when work is done extremely hot and very tired. He asks the meaning of the sound of such unwanted revelry. They said his brother had been found. He found himself, it seems to me. Twas natural the eldest son should take a thing a little hard and brood on what was past and done or standing pensive in the yard. Now he was hungry and knocked out, and would if they had let him out, had rested and cooled down, no doubt, and hugged his brother after tea. And welcomed him and hugged his dag and filled the wine cup to the brim. Just when he was a feeling bad, the old man came and tackled him. He well might say with bitter tears, while music swelled and flowed the wine. Lo, I have served thee many years, not cause thee one grey hair of me. Whate'er thou baddest me did I do, and for my brother made amends, thou never gavest me a kid for merrymaking with my friends. He was no heavy clod and glum. He who could not trespass single dance, he could be merry with a chance, it seemed if he had half a chance. Perhaps if further light we seek in you, and hear him lay the sting, his brother would clear out next week, and promptly pop the robe and ring. The father said, the wandering one is lost, is found this son of mine, but thou art always with me, son, thou knowest all I have as thine. It seemed the best robe and the ring, the love and fatted calf were not, but this was just a little thing, the old man in his joy forgot. And all I have, the paltry bribe, that he might slave contented, while envied by his selfish tribe, the birthright he might never get. The work out farm and endless graft, the mortgage home, the barren run, their hope was heavy overdraft, the portion of the elder son. Sometimes the eldest takes a tack when things at home have got too bad. He comes not crawling, canting back to see the blind side of his dad. He always finds a knife and fork and meat between them which to die. And though he sometimes deals in pork, he never eats his meals with swine. The happy home, the overdraft, his birthright and his prospects grow. His share likewise of the graft, he leaves the rest to grab and they who'd always do the thing by heart. If anything for him was done, should kill a score of fatted calves to welcome home 
the eldest son. The belly of the eldest son. A never never land. By homestead, hut and shearing shed, by row, road, coach and track. By lonely graves where rest our dead up country and out back. To where beneath the clustered stars the dreamy plains expand. My home lies wide, a thousand miles in the never, never land. It lies beneath the farming belt, wide wastes of scrub and plain, a blazing desert in the drought and land, lake land after rain. To the skyline sweeps the waving grass, or whirls the scorching sand, a phantom land, a mystic realm, the never, never land. Where mountain desolation lies, mounds dreadful and despair, tis lost beneath the rainless skies in hopeless deserts there. It spreads nor'west by no man's land, where clouds are seldom seen to where the cattle stations lie. Three hundred miles between. The drovers of the great stock routes, the strange gulf country nowhere travelling for the northern grafts. The big lean bullocks go and camp by night where plains lie wide and like some old ocean's bed, the stockmen in the starlight ride round fifteen hundred head. And west of name and numbered days, the shearers walk and ride. Jack Cornstalk and the ne'er do well and greybeard by the side. They veil their eyes from moon and stars and slumber in the sand. Sad memories sleep as the years go round in never, never land. O oh, rebels to society, the outcasts of the West, O oh, hopeless eyes that smile for me and broken hearts that jest, the pluck to face a thousand miles, the grit to see it through, the communism perfected till man to man is true, the Arab in the desert stand, the fin to fens and snow, the flax stick dreams of Maori land, what seasons come and go, Whatever stars may glow or burn, our lands of east and west, the wandering hearts of man will turn to one that loves the best. Lest in the city I forget, true mateship after all, my water bag and billet are hanging on the wall, and I try to save my soul again, would tramp to sunset's ground with sad eyes mates across the plain. In never. Never land. Do you hear that this is the root march? Do you hear the children singing of my brothers? Do you hear the children singing as our troops went marching past in the sunshine and the rain? So I'll never sing again. Hear the little girls singing as our troops went swinging past. Did you hear the children singing of my brothers? Did you hear the children singing for the first man and the last as they marched away and vanished to a tune we thought was vanished? Did you hear the children singing for the future and the past? Shall we hear the children singing, oh my brothers? Shall we hear the children singing in the sunshine or the rain? There'll be songs beneath the ringing of the cheers and beneath the singing. There'll be tears of orphans singing when our boys come home again. 
Did you hear the children singing all my brothers? Did you hear the children singing as our troops went marching past in the sunshine and the rain? As they'll never sing again, hear the little girls singing as our troops went swinging past. Did you hear the children singing all my brothers? Did you hear the children singing for the first night and the last as they marched away and vanished to a tune we thought was banished? Did you hear the children singing for the future and the past? Shall we hear the children singing, oh my brothers? Shall we hear the children singing in the sunshine or the rain? There'll be sobs beneath the ringing of the chairs and beneath the singing. There'll be tears of orphan children when our boys come back again. A very sad song, a root march, or the route march. There'll be tears of orphan children when our boys come back again. What a great power. Kiss in the ring. I've not seen a picnic for many a day. My heart has grown callous and my head has grown grey. But old faded letters, their memories bringing on. Thinking tonight about a kiss in the ring. Kiss in the ring, kiss in the ring. Oh, how it makes me remember the old kiss in the ring. We drove down the dark gullies and we drove down the creek. We drove down the sidelings and we drove round the peak in carts and buggies to the bush girls to bring them to laugh with us there in sweet kiss in the ring. Kiss in the ring, kiss in the ring. I remember the days of the sweet kiss in the ring. I bet it doesn't mean what it means what I'm thinking. <laughs> and now I think sadly of years in their flight. At the turn by the slick rails, I kissed her good night. She's under the turf, but our memories cling. Do angels dance with her to kiss in the ring? Kiss in the ring, sweet kiss in the ring. Do angels dance with her to kiss in the ring? Kiss in the ring, sweet kiss in the ring. Do angels dance with her to kiss in the ring? Beautiful. There you go. I want to kiss in the ring. Hmm. Oh, here we go. These are paper. Fell out. If a piece of paper fell out, then it's probably the one I'm supposed to be reading. <coughs> Clear the throat. This is called Says You. When the heavy sand is, let's start again. When the heavy sand is yielding backwards from your blistered feet and across the distant timber you can see the flowing heat. And your head is hot and aching in the shadeless plain is wide and it's 15 miles to water in the scrub the other side. Don't give up, don't be downhearted. To a man's strong heart be true. Take the air in through your nostrils. Set your lips and see it through. For it can't go on forever and I'll have my day, says you. When you're camping in the mulder and the rain has fallen slow, while you nurse your rheumatism neath a strip of calico, short of tucker or tobacco, short of sugar or of tea, and the scrubs are dark and dismal and the plains are like a sea. Don't give up and be downhearted to the soul of a man be true. Grin if you've a mate for grin, grin and joke and don't look blue. For it can't go on forever. And I'll rise, says you. 
When you've trampled the Sydney pavements till you've counted all the flags and your flapping poots holes trip you and your clothes are mostly rags and you called a city loafer, shunned abused, move on, despise fifty hundred beggars after every job that's advertised. Don't be beaten, hold your head up to your wretched self be true. Set your pride to fight your hunger. Be a man in all you do. For it can't go on forever, and I'll rise again, says you. When you're dossing out in winter in the darkness and the rain, crouched, cramped and cold and hungry neath the seat in the domain, and a cloaked policeman stirs you with that mighty foot of his, what you doing, mate? What's this? Here you go. Come on, move out. Get out with this. Don't get mad. That's only foolish. There's nothing you can do. Save to mark his feet and time him. Find another hole or two. But it can't go on forever. I'll have money yet, says you. Don't you fret about the morrow, for sufficient to the day is the evil rather more so. Put your trust in God and pray. Study well the ant, thou sluggard, blessed are he meek and low. Ponder calmly on the lilies, how they are idly, how they grow. A man's a man, obey your masters, do not blame the proud and fat, for poor are always with them, and they cannot hold to that. Lay your treasure. Cling to life and see it through. For it cannot last forever. I shall die someday, says you. And is I wish there was Andy Skynick Grogan here, but that's um, that's a uh, um, someone else's, I'm sure. What am I going to do? All right, one more, and then a voice from the city. A western plain and eastern hill, where once my fancy ranged, the station hands are riding still. And they are little changed. But I have lost in London Brulum the glory of the day. The old sweet scent of wattle bloom is faint and far away. I walk my life on pavement stones that drag me ever down, a paltry slave to little things, by custom chained to crown and town. I've lost the strength to strike alone, the heart to do and dare. When swag and will were still my own, I'd tramp to God knows where. I mind the time when I was shy to meet the brown bush girls. I've launched, lunched with lords since then, and I have been at home with earls. I learnt to smile and learnt to bow and lie to ladies gay. But to a gaunt bush woman now, what should I have to say? And if I sought her home out west from scenes of show and sham, the hard place would grimly test the poor weak thing I am. I could not meet her hopeless eyes that look one through and through the haggard woman hardship wise who once thought I was true. But naught on earth can last for I and while with care and pain by some day by chance I'll break away and see the bush again and find the while from bitter wares years the rest the bush can bring and hear perhaps with truer ears the songs it has to sing. All right, we got, I've got another one for you. Here we go. Genoa, a long farewell to Genoa that rises to the skies where the barren coast of Italy like our own coast lies. A sad farewell to Genoa and long my heart shall grieve the only city in the world that I was loath 
to leave. No sign of rush or stress is there, no war of greed they wage. The deep, cool streets of Genoa are rock-like in their age. No garish signs of commerce there against the sky are flung. The rag that drapes the balcony an artist's hands have hung. I've said farewell to tinted days and glorious starry nights. I've said farewell to Naples with her long straight lines of lights. Yet it is not for Naples that I grieve, but for Genoa that I grieve, the only city in the world that I was loath to leave. Mm. New love, new life. The cool breeze ripples the river below and the fleecy clouds float high and I mark how the dark green gum trees match the bright blue vault of the sky. The rain has been and the grass is green where the slopes were bare and brown and I see the things that I used to see in the days ere my head went down. I have found a light in my long dark night brighter than the stars or moon. I have lost the fear of the sunset drear and the sadness of afternoon. Here let us stand, stand while I hold your hand where the light's on your golden head. Oh, I feel the thrill that I used to feel in the days ere my heart was dead. The storm's gone by, but my lips are dry and the old wrong wrinkles yet Sweetheart or wife, I must take a new life from your red lips, warm and wet. So let it be, you may cling to me, there's nothing on earth to dread, for I'll be the man that I used to be in the days ere my heart was dead. A love poem by Henry Lawson. How beautiful. Well, we're just about coming to the end of uh, Henry Lawson, Men We Might Have Been. When God's rough cloud is o'er me, a frighting, a frightening heart and mind, when days seem dark before me and days seem black behind, those friends who think they know me, who deem their insight keen, they never forget to show me the man I might have been. He's rich and independent, or rising fast to fame. His bright soul is ascendant, the country knows no name. His houses and his gardens are splendid to be seen. His fault, the wise world pardons the man I might have been. His fame and fortune haunt me, his virtues wave me back, his name and honours taunt me when I would take the track. But you, my friend, true hearted, God keep our friendship green, for know how I was parted from all I might have been. But what avails the ache of remorse or re weak regret? We battle for the sale of the men we might be yet. We'll strive to keep the sight of the brave, the true and clean, and triumph yet in spite of the men we might have been. One more. Mount Buckaroo. Only one old post is standing solid yet, but only one, where the milking and the branding and the slaughtering were done. Later years have brought dejection, care and sorrow, but we knew happy days on that selection. Underneath old Bacaroo. Then the light of day commencing found us at the gully's head, splitting timber for the fencing, stripping bark to roof the shed. Hands and heart with labour, strength and weariness we never knew, even when the shadows lengthened round the base of Bacaroo. There for days below the paddock how the wilderness would yield to the spade and pick and mattock while we toiled to win the field. Hard brown hands are hard to sully, ours to deepest blackest group, burning down the gully at the back of Uggaroo. When we came, the baby brother left in haste his broken toys, shouted to the busy mother, Here is Dada and the boys! 
strange one woman's arms were able, all those rough bush tasters to how she bustle round the table in the hut neath Butteroo. When the cows were safely yarded and the calves were in the pen, all the cares of day discarded round the fire we clustered then, rang the roof with boyish laughter while the flames were o'er top the flue. Happy nights remembered after, far away from Buckaroo. But the years are full of changes and a sorrow found us there. For our home amid the ranges was not safe from searching care. On it came a silent creeper and another mountain through. Oh, our lives a shadow deeper than the shade of Buckaroo. All right. So that has been a little bit of a Henry Lawson read for you tonight. I've also got this one here, The Illustrated Treasury of Henry Lawson. On the Wallaby. Now, the tent poles are rotting and the campfires are dead and the possums may gamble in the trees overhead. I'm humping my bluey flower out in the land and the prints of my blacks are sink deep in the sand. I'm out on the wallaby humping my drum and I come by the tracks where the sun down has come. It's not west, and not west are the ranges and the far to the plains where the cattle and the sheep stations are with the sky for my roof and the grass for my bunk and a calico bag for my damper and junk. And scarcely a comrade my memory reveals, save the spiritless dingo in tow at my heels. But I think of the honest old light in my home, where the stars hang clusters like lamps in the dome, and I think of the half where the dark shadows fall, when my campfire is built on the widest of all. But I'm following fate, for I know she knows best, I know she leads north, west by north, west. When my tent is all torn and my blankets are damp, and the rising flood waters flow fast by the camp, when the cold water rises in jets from the floor, I lie in my bunk and I listen to the roar and I think how tomorrow my footsteps will lag when I tramp neath the weight of a rain-sodden swag. Though the way of the swagman is mostly uphill, there are joys to be found on the wallabies still when the day is gone with its tramp or its toil and your campfire your light and your billy a boil, there is comfort and peace in the bowl of your clay. Or the yarn of the mate who is tramping that way. But beware of the town, there is poison for years in the pleasure you'll find in the death of long beers. For the bushman gets bushed in the streets of the town where he loses his friend when his check is knocked down. He's right till his pockets are empty and then he can hump his old bluey up the country again. All right. Now, just because I'm doing a, a poetry, we're celebrating Henry Lawson. I'm going to do not Henry Lawson. Ah. Uh, all right. This one here is a uh, little quote I wrote. Life can be a bed of roses. Sometimes. Life is a test, but if you do not like the pricks, toughen up, princess. Again, life can be a bed of roses, sometimes life's a test. If you do not like the pricks, toughen up, princess. Because there's lots of pricks in the world. Oh, here we go. Now, where did Henry get this from? Inspiration, that's right. Things come to you and you see something and you write about it because you're a writer and that's just how it works. But where do those words come from? I don't know. I think they, oh, I do actually. I think they come from spirit, higher, the higher self. And this is what I wrote three, four, between 3.40 and 4.40 this morning on a dark, moonless night in my bedroom. 
Spirit comes when I listen quite in bed in the silence of the night when spirit comes, I begin to write. What leads me to a higher height? Sharing spirit's point of view, the one you're... No. Sharing spirit's point of view that you're the one to lift up you, fly straight to your target and true. Be one, make plans, take action, do. This is not a mindless platitude. Successful people have a positive attitude. Also practice universal gratitude. Increase your frequency, not your amplitude. Spirit also has this to say, there's no need to complain any day. Droughts break when the sky is grey. Ugly ducks become swans and fly away. You're an individual in a community. Shine your light of love and unity. Positive intentions have impunity. A problem reframed as an opportunity. Spirit wants to speak about emotions to love, peace, happiness, be your devotion. Less negative and more positive quotient. Calm and glassy like a windless ocean. Spirit has almost come to the end. There are just these words, my dear friend. You decide when the life you tend grows or comes to an ignominious end. You're not a baby in a nappy, clean yourself up, don't be crappy, don't allow others to make you unhappy. You can be slow, ooh, zippy zappy. Reflecting on your role as one of the cast, Spirit says this one thing last. Do not dwell in ideas of the past. Life's an adventure, the world is vast. You're the one to put on a show. There's so many interesting places you'll go. Live from the heart, inspired by flow to lift spirits up from too high from down low. Spirit says you can emanate light from a dark room in a moonless night. Thank you for listening and to write the ideas spirit's mind brings to light. Something like that. And because we are in spring, second day of spring, I want to say happy spring. Happy spring. Happy spring. Do your own thing. I'll be singing, dancing, running, and of course springing. Spring has sprung. It's just begun. This poem can be sung with a tongue from a lung on a rung in a pile of dung. Eating a mung bean. You know what I mean. Keen for a bean, so I'll plant a bit of green. Beans, peas, and other things. Sowing, growing, watering, plowing in spring. When the growing is done, the harvest is beginning with the picking and the washing and chopping and the cooking and the serving and the reason we ringing with the dinner bell dinging. We'll be eating and drinking, dancing, hanging and springing and spring. Happy Spring. And just so you can comprehend it, I'll do it one more time, not slower. Happy Spring, do your own thing, I'll be singing, dancing, running, and of course springing. Spring has sprung, it's just begun, this poem can be sung, we've got a hung tongue from a lung, a little while, rung on a pile of dunk, eating a mung, bean, you know what I mean, keen for a bean, so I'll plant a bit of green, beans, peas, and other things, sowing, growing, watering, planting in spring. When the growing is done, the house is beginning with the ticking and the washing, chopping and the cooking, singing and the... <laughs> When the when the growing is done, the harvesting beginning with the picking and the washing and chopping and the cooking and the serving and the reason we ring with the dinner bell ring dinging and we're eating and the drinking and dancing and the singing and springing in spring. Happy spring. Thank you very much. Alright. Well, look, life is a set of brackets within an infinite soul. And with that, I'm going to put parenthesis around my time and finish close brackets. And I'll say, see you later. Big thank you to Henry Lawson and his life and his beautiful writing, The Life and Times of Henry Lawson's Only 55 Years He Lived. And he got a lot of beautiful writing out there. Um, so check him out. Uh, it's, it's not just poetry, he did heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of short stories. So if you get a, a short story, you've got these amazing like historical perspective of a travelling alcoholic journalist, poet, etc. So get into him. He's, 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 he's one of many poets here in Australia, not just 
colonizers, settlers, but also the wonderful First Nations poets that we have these days. And we always did because they were like some men and women, etc., etc. All right, I'm going to get out of here before I put my foot into that pile of dung, which is growing among bean. You know what I mean? Came for a bean child plant, a bit of green peas and beans. Yeah, no, I can't get out of here and start the, start the growing and the sewing and the cooking and the washing and the eating and the cooking and the dancing and the spring in spring. Okay, everybody's doing their thing. And I'll see you later. Thundercloud here from the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame. I'm leaving you, leaving rainbows after rains. I'm washing away the garbage, leaving rainbows after rains. Yes, everybody knows. Mum calls me James. I'll see you later. Bing. Bah.